Hello everybody, this is Juntes. Today we are finally going to be taking a look at Dolom's Bear Sorceress build. In the video which he made about a year ago, he basically showed off a build that I actually didn't know about. And since I did recently claim that the Paladin Seal build with Dual Dream was the best melee build, I thought to end the year off I wanted to kinda do his build and just see for myself the power of this beast. Truly he made it look insane in the few videos that he did on the build. So if you haven't done so, please check it out. The description is gonna be below, uh, in, the, in the description below, yeah. <laughs> um, but seriously, let's just uh, quickly go over the build here. This is all, you know, pretty much centered around Dream Dream, so we get really crazy Holy Shop or with full Lightning Mastery. Uh, this dude down here, Lightning Mastery maxed out. And uh, yeah, we are basically just doing a lot of AoE and then we have crazy fast attack speed. I think it's something like 5 attacks per second or something crazy frames like that. Uh, so yeah, fast attacks, decent AoE from all the lightning damage. Um, and I suppose good enough survival if you're willing to use Dracul's gloves over Mage Feast, but more on that later. Let's just quickly uh, actually find a pack or two before we get kinda in this little part. So let's do a pack here. Again, just notice the survival and stuff like that. You saw that there are cool gloves prog it there, and instantly the life went up like a thousand health. The problem with the survival is that even if I'm cap resistance at 3000 life before battle orders, um, it's the same problem I had on my Rift Assassin where I end up killing mobs so fast that I don't have time to lead or even proc the cool gloves on packs that is pretty much one shotted. Um, but yeah, besides that, I think the survival is pretty good. I will however say that without the cool gloves and at least 5% leech on one ring or something like that, it's not gonna work out even for like normal PVM standard uh, clearance. Uh, especially also if you were gonna do ubers, you obviously have to use the cool gloves. But let's move on. So before we move on to all the easy things like gear and so forth, let's talk about pre-buff gear. So in Dolom's wild shot video, he actually does spend a lot of time on pre-buff gear. Basically, as you can see here, 87k max damage. That is how high he was able to get it up with crazy pre-buff gear, switching two or three times between it in the video. So basically he spends, I don't know, two minutes or something like that to pre-buff gear. That is an extremely clunky gameplay and it's exactly the same problem I had with the sealed sorceress. But um, for the guide variation of this very build here, I'm not gonna focus on pre-buff gear, I just do want to show it off really fast now. We are using a crazy pre-buff uh, yeah, wand here, what you want to call it. Basically this has uh, plus 3 fire mastery, plus 3 enchant, 2 sockets and plus 3 fire skills. I'm not even sure how much this would cost, but let's just assume it's probably more than I could ever afford. But that's not even the most expensive part about it, that's yeah, more on that later. And then he's also using a plus 3 fire skills amulet with 30 strain. This amulet is used together with a spirit shield that is also Eve. When an armor or weapon, whatever, is uh, ethereal, it requires less strain to wear, so this is a good pre buff gear. Then he uses an armor with yeah, a socket, obviously, with a fire facet inside of it, plus 3 to enchant, and obviously also 15% uh, fire damage. And then he uses at last here a superior diadem, two sockets, and plus 3 to fire skills. While these items, free items here are not too expensive, this one would be extremely expensive and very costly to get. So already there I have a huge problem with getting the best pre-buff gear. Then he also uses obviously a call to arms. And then he has a few switch science items such as uh, Mage Feast Globs, Raven Frost Rings. And then he also has a full kitted out inventory with fire scalers or lightning scalers depending on you know your own setup if you want to have a full inventory and whatnot but basically he switches out all these items forth and back to get 87k enchant damage it takes a while and while he also does comment about it in the video where he says you don't really need all that uh, you know damage going on it's only for like a longer game so if you knew you were playing for like 15 minutes in the game it would perhaps be worth to pre-buff all the way up to 87 or 80 90k uh, enchant fire damage 
But uh, that's pretty much it for the pre-buff gear. Very clunky, just like the steel sorceress badge which I've shown before on the channel. Very well then, let's move on with some easier things. Stats first. Just enough strain to wear your, was it, uh, yeah, the bone visage. It basically just depends on what base you were wearing. Because uh, the Griswold shield, or the Griswold uh, wave on here, sorry, the wave on, only requires 78 strain, and that's very little. And the tower shield is only at 75. So you could basically just go with like an, yeah, a dusk route, chains of honor, and another base. Um, yeah, just get whatever you can. However, I will however note that it is extremely important that you get 30% faster hit recovery on both dreams. That means you reach a 60% faster hit recovery breakpoint without having to sacrifice anything on inventory, other setups, whatever. So again, if you're not able to get proper well-rolled dream room words, don't even bother doing this build. Like that's already, yeah, it's a very expensive build, but I just wanted to, I can mention, faster hit recovery in this part. Then enough uh, dexterity just to again to wear the... I think it was only the Griswold shield. Yeah, I think it was just the Griswold shield. We are not gonna worry about max block. Uh, also again another thing on tower shield. Why tower shield? Well tower shield has a very low strain requirement. That's already good. But it also has the highest chance of block for a source of a shield base. So just go with the tower shield, it's the best base that I know of at least, so yeah, a good choice if you want a little extra block. And then vitality, the rest of the points is dumped into, and you should never really worry about energy at all. Now, uh, attack rating, I guess we should cover that as well in this part. Since we're using an affinity, you know, conviction or and everything, it has a low radius, so... Um, let, let's say that this pole here with the fire is a mob and if you stand here with your mercy chain, like say the mercy chain is fighting this drognan over here and I am hitting uh, lightning immune mobs at this radius with my aura, the damage is not gonna be, you know, they are not gonna take any damage because they're lightning immune and the radius on conviction aura is not gonna hit mobs that far away. That's a problem that I keep seeing again and again and again on this build. Uh, it's just very annoying because again, it's very, very important that you utilize the uh, Holy Shock aura with this build because it basically revolves around that. Obviously, you're also doing a lot of single target damage yourself with very high uh, damage in that regard. But yeah, I just don't really think that you really need attack rating on this build just begin because Conviction aura both reduces uh, defense, so you don't need much uh, tank rating, but also just a little note on the you know, the lightning mastery uh, ordeal there. But yeah, just get whatever amount of attack rating you really want. If you want 10,000 attack rating, consider even use a blessed aimed mercy chant, uh, blessed aimed aura even, instead of might. But um, yeah, I just want to believe in conviction aura all the way. <laughs> And then uh, life, you should probably at least get 1000 life before any other stats. Um, you could probably even go without faster one wall uh, grand champs and get even more life. But I don't think it's really needed because I like to be able to move just a little bit fast. Uh, in this case, I have 35% faster one wall in the inventory and then 40% faster one wall from Sanders boots. And yeah, I think that's uh, about it. Oh, yeah, I could also mention just really fast, uh, if you really wanted easy attack rating, uh, if you maybe were not even using Affinity for whatever reason, and that would probably be stupid, but if you weren't, you could probably just go with like two Raven Frost Rings. Um, you could perhaps even uh, go with the, uh, yeah, value the attack rating on Metal Grid Amulet. You know, there's a lot of options uh, to go with. Um, you could maybe even like ditch the Sanders boots as well if you didn't want a tag rating. There's definitely many ways of doing it. Like in this case, I could perhaps even go without the Metal Grid Amulet and go with Morris Amulet as well. Just, yeah, pick whatever you want. It, it doesn't matter too much, but again, do you believe in Conviction Aura or not? That's kind of the ordeal. So let's take a look at the build. Obviously, we're maxing Lightning Mastery and li uh, Fire Mastery. Those are the kind of the two main abilities of the build. And then we are actually doing a very fun thing, which I haven't done on any Sorceress builds to this date. 
We are putting remaining points into Shiver Armor. I thought that was pretty cool, but it totally makes sense just to get more survival, etc. You know, basically just the duration, which means you don't have to pop out a wear bear to, you know, buff up that much. Uh, then you also get a little cold damage, cold land, but it's mostly just the defense. Um, for lightning, you, I should also know X Levin, but teleport, but yeah, I can fix that before we kind of move into gameplay. It, it's kind of good enough to have teleport on this build, even if you have a lot of faster one walk. But, um, yeah, it's basically just uh, lightning mastery, fire mastery. Uh, I also actually went with uh, thunderstorm, because I believe it's kind of cool to just uh, throw extra points into this tree, instead of just getting a stronger shiver armor. And yeah, then the remaining points, you know, after all the other main things, you should just buff up your enchant and get synergies into Wormed. You could actually just go with lesser points into enchant if you really wanted to. I mean, it's mostly just the lightning damage I'm focused on, but yeah, it makes sense obviously to get the strongest possible worm that you can. So, uh, the best strongest, uh, possible strongest enchant even. So yeah. <laughs> It's a uh, it's a pretty freaking simple build, but uh, it has a few quirks with the Shira armor variation here. Very well then, time for the gear. This is definitely gonna be a bit of a long one, I'm afraid, but we are gonna have to talk about some ideas for both survival and also gain a bit of attack rating. So I tried with uh, Mage Three's gloves on, uh, also consider gl other gloves options, but I felt like without Rakul's gloves, we were just dying too easily. With this setup, I was also likely gonna be able to always just do Ubers in the same gear without having to switch anything out. But um, yeah, we're staying with the Cool's Gloves because of the survival. That life type proc is just needed. Then I'm using two Bulkatas winning bands. It's basically just to get more leads life and then plus one to all skills. If I wanted more attack rating, more on that later, I should go with one Raven Frost Ring or maybe even two. A rock belt just for, well, I suppose some faster cast rate if I was gonna teleport a bit around and then plus one to all skills. Sanders boots for just a bit of attack rating, more on that later. Lightless shield, beast on switch, chains of honor for the massive amount of survival resistance, you know, overall really crazy melee stats. And then a dream uh, helm and a metal grid for attack rating. Then here on the main items, obviously another dream, and then my Griswold. Now, there are two ways to kind of go around with the weapon. Either you do a weapon like this one, with, uh, you know, some, some resistance, some kind of, yeah, variables, something like that. They all have to have, uh, at least what I looked at, at least what I found out, is that you have to have at least 100% increased attack speed with this build. Now I'm not having you know any attack speed sources from any other gear, so all my attack rating comes from the weapon alone, which makes it really hard. And that is why I went with some 15-15 duels in both setups. Well, in this case, it's some 40% enhanced defense uh, damage and some 40% increased attack speed duels, where the other ones just are 15-15 resistance increased attack speed. It depends, it really, really depends. Um, I didn't really need the resistance to cap resistance, so I just went with more damage. And I think uh, enhanced uh, damage is just uh, the best choice. But yeah, the attack speed, I'm, I'm not really able to get smart on that one. So I aimed just for 100% increased attack speed, because that's what I you know, found on the picture on the, yeah, on the increased attack speed uh, breakpoint chart. So um, yeah. That's uh, pretty much it for the gear. I suppose I'll just also quickly mention again, we can use all the prevop gear which I talked about, but yeah, I don't really bother with it for the video because it's rather clunky and I want to show off the build without any prebuff gear. Like how good is the build without having to spend one or two minutes going back to town, forth and back with prebuff gear. Now, uh, let's talk about attack rating then. As you can see right now, this is also with enchant buffed with no prebuff gear, obviously. 62k damage and 3000 attack rating in wear bear. Uh, oh yeah, we'll keep on there. Without wear bear, it's down to quite a bit less. Um, or actually, it's the same. Sorry about that. But <laughs> you know, 3800 attack rating. That's not a lot, and I can actually get it even less. I can go with these two items. 
Now I only have 1330 and this is where again we are gonna talk a little bit about conviction aura. If we assume that conviction aura is gonna help us enough out to not having any need for attack rating, I can honestly just go with some really crazy items, you know, I can go with Morris Amulet, I can go with Gore Riders Boots, uh, I can go with two Bulkatos winning bands, uh, like the, the gear just gets so much more offensive, but if we assume that I do need a little attack rating to actually hit stuff, I have to use these uh, two items at the very least. Maybe even uh, consider, you know, a second Ravenfrost ring or Metal Grid Amulet on, uh, or Mars Amulet on and then a Ravenfrost ring. Like, there's many ways that you could kind of do this, but I can never really get 100% sure what sort of attack rating I want in this build. But I think for kind of the showcase of the build, you know, yeah, in the gameplay part, I kind of just want to go full out offensive with Gore Rider's Boots, Morris Amulet, and two Bulkatos Wedding Bands. I feel like that's a very cool uh, way of doing it. Also, just again, look at all the plus skillers, you know, 32 to Firemaster. We get like plus two extra skillers or something with this setup, which is quite a bit of extra damage. So, yeah, we are going to believe in Conviction or That's uh, basically what I wanted to say. <laughs> So let's also quickly cover the inventory and the Mercigen. For this build you could actually use a Blessed Aimed Aura on your Mercigen and I think that's the only build I can actually recommend this Aura on over Might Aura or maybe another variation like the Cold one. It's pretty cool to actually be able to utilize Blessed Aim so I wanted to mention that. But let's also just uh, cover the gear for the Mercy Chain itself. It's always just a standard uh, Infinity setup with Endorial's Visage with an increased attack speed duel in and an Ethereal Fortitude. Very boring, but it's so powerful. And then let's also co quickly cover the inventory then. Now, uh, in Dolo M's video, he actually has a 5% faster one wall uh, lightning damage uh, small charm, which blew my mind away. That dude must have a lot of FG, because I do believe that such a small charm, while they are technically still on the market, few people are selling them, they probably about, about uh, 10 to 20 FG each, uh, K each. So yeah, they cost a crap ton, and then yeah, I saw he had one, so that was like, wow, he actually has one. Um, but yeah, those were like old versions of small charms 15 years ago, but they would be, you know, the best small champs that you could get for this build by far so if you really had a lot of wealth and some contacts and ideas of you know even just finding uh, them it would be the best option but i went with some you know more modest small champs these could have even more lightning damage they could have, have up to 99 lightning damage i think but i just went and modded some more modest ones so they are not too overpowered and then I went with some faster one walk on some small uh, grand charms here, and just one on will life because uh, you didn't really need more faster one walk because it's uh, you know one uh, tick is every five percent faster one walk. So I went with just thirty five from the inventory, and then just whatever the boots gives you. And then a decent enough tort and an Helios. So um, basically, um, there's a lot of variations for the inventory. You could even perhaps go with like, you know, get to, what's it, 86% uh, uh, faster hit recovery. Um, if you wanted more faster hit recovery than just 60, that's also an option instead of getting, uh, you know, the stats that I went for. And you could even perhaps ditch the faster one walk and get lightning damage on this one. That would be a good option as well. So yeah, it's kind of like up to your own budget and your own preferences. Now then, let's move on to some gameplay on Player's 8. Now this is again with no pre-buff gear, using all the gear that I'm only wearing right now. The enchant damage at 67k, uh, switching out a few items can buff it up a little bit. Um, yeah, I f don't think there's much more to say than that, so let's try this one out with such a small amount of attack rating and so forth. And as you saw, the Eldrick was pretty much one-shotted. You know, without pre-buff gear this works. It definitely seems to work better than, say, the sealed sorceress without pre-buff gear. I am worrying constantly about the survival, however. 
I still like to believe that the survival is absolutely crap here on this build. Uh, maybe I'm just wrong, but I don't feel safe. But um, yeah, I think I just have to start uh, believing in Dracul's gloves and then just go from there. And yeah, you can just see Shank here pretty much one shot as soon as it connects. And like it seems to connect with the Conviction Aura and everything, even if it has such a small amount of attack rating. We can perhaps try this one out. Okay, the actually did miss there. Let's uh, try find a lone mob here. Okay, that connected. Okay, can miss there. So perhaps you do need just a little bit of attack rating. I'm talking blessed aim or something like that. Just maybe get it up to like 5,000 attack rating would be a good aim. But um, let's keep that in mind. Very well then, let's move on to the actual gameplay part. This is gonna be on players 1 to kinda just give it a, you know, a fair run. I went ahead and got a blessed aim mercy chant. I'm also using one Raven Frost Ring and a Metal Grid Amulet. This is about as comfortable as I'm gonna aim for in attack rating. I'm just gonna quickly showcase these stats. 7,753, uh, 33 attack rating. I'm not gonna get more attack rating than this. Conviction or not, that should be plenty. You did see me however miss on the skeletons just before. But let's get to bail. This uh, should be enough to at least have some fun. Very well then, at Bale's throne room. Let's see how it can perform. It's still on players 1. I should also note a little thing, um, it's actually decent teleport uh, overall speed. You know, you have a rock belt and lightly shield and switch, it's actually pretty decent. And if you kind of wanted to, you could actually also fit in a spirit shield, which would make the teleport experience even better. So, let's try this little pack here. I see, this is where I'm basically just hoping Dracul's gloves are gonna proc. Uh, they did proc there, so that was nice, but yeah, <laughs> spiky damage is just so dangerous if I'm looking for Dracul's uh, gloves and they haven't proc it yet. So, a little, little bit of souls on this map, not the nicest thing. This is where the resistance comes in, really good to have that kept out, but that's also pretty easy when you get to use Chains of Honor. Yay, the Mercer Chen got stronger. <laughs> I forgot to make the level to my own a little bit. Anywho, let's see about the Bale Wave. Actually, been a long time since I tested out a build for a video on uh, Bale's uh, minions, so this should be fun. God, I love the attack rating. It's just, it just looks so uh, wild with the animation. I'm expecting to be kind of pummeled on the uh, third wave, but we'll see. I can definitely see myself doing this uh, pack here faster if I had perhaps the Might Aura and pre-buff gear going. But again, for the demonstration of the build, I really did not want to utilize it just because I don't like pre-buff gear. I feel like it's such a clunky mechanic and it just takes something away from you know, my own, uh, what can you say, will to play the build. Um, yeah, it's just not very nice. That's at least uh, my point of view on it. But the Mercy Chant, of course, dies always on this uh, silly uh, Hydra fires. Let's see if I needed any potions. I kind of did, so let's just do a few of that. And let's move on. Oh man, so come on, Dracul's gloves. Okay, it progged there, that's nice. Still, it's just dangerous to wait on Dracul's gloves. I really do not like that uh, at all. Um, I would say I played with builds that progs it, uh, you know, slower than this one, but it still feels dangerous to just kind of rely on Dracul's gloves. 
This should be an easy pack. I mean, it's just... Yeah. Let's see. Ah, come on, this stupid recall gloves. And the Mercy Ten's gonna die again. <laughs> ah, man, the Mercy Ten uh, dies and I can't get recalls to proc. So having tried it out on Bale's minions, let's move on to the throne room. This is also the part where Dolorem really did show off the build really nice at the end of his uh, build guide. Let's see about this pack down here. Uh, this is a classic pack where you I always kind of like to believe these sort of packs here are just kind of a good DPS test, sort of like the Eldrix and Shint. Definitely a good density on this map at least. An elite pack there. Now again, as always, when I kind of do f uh, you know Keras runs and, and stuff like that, I kind of just want to have you to notice the uh, you know the the damage taken, the survival, etc. Because again, I really don't like the survival in this build. I feel like the damage potential is there, but I just don't really yeah, I don't really like the survival. Now the Mercy Chen also ended up dying again. It just goes so fast. Anywho, as we move on. Let's uh, try to do a few crazy pulls, you know, take a bit of a risk, that's also kind of what I do enjoy about these sort of uh, builds uh, that I try to show off on the channel, just uh, push it to the limit, you know, you know, you could kind of kite around and be a little more, you know, careful, which I could have easily have done in the throne room, but what would have been the point of spending maybe two minutes on the last wave, uh, would have been a bit of a boring show. Cause that's like a cool thing, you know, you're always doing just a little bit of lightning damage to mobs around you. So the kiting potential is definitely there. So let's see this pack here. It's always extremely deadly for any melee build. And now the Mercy Chan is dying. <laughs> it probably tanked a lot of the mobs. I kind of kited it into a, you know, a corner where it was kind of the front man. So that was a bit of a fun thing to see. It did survive. Let's see if I can get it to cools to gloves. Oh, yeah, they plug it there. Good. For some reason, I kind of just wanted to f slap on, uh, you know, pre-buff gear at this moment. I feel like the damage is maybe just a bit less in these higher level areas. But uh, again, we are only having 58k uh, damage right now, which, you know, it's quite a bit less than 87k with maximum pre-buff gear and so forth. So let's take a look at the last wave. Oh man, Dracul's prog at a perfect moment there, that's just nice. At least the survival should be no problem now. Yeah. Uh, when you get really good, you know, Dracul's procs, it just feels so much more, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily too easy, but it just, yeah, it just, oh, it clicks, it just uh, very satisfying. So, um, let's just see about the damage then. Am I missing just a few hits or what? <laughs> yeah, I was missing just a bit at the start, but basically it's a good boss killer, you know, it has a good single damage, um, even without using all the pre-buff gear, which is again something I talked about in the video here, which I don't really prefer using, because I just feel like it, it takes away the fun part of the build when it's so clunky to use. Sort of like the Seal Source, which, which I also don't like, because it heavily relies on uh, pre-buff gear. But yeah, this was definitely an interesting look. Um, I don't know if I could really consider, you know, changing it up or something like that. Because I feel like M had everything right from the start. All the mechanics were pretty fleshed out. Um, there's just like a few variations with, again, attack rating and, you know, a few things like that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the Werebear Sorceress. Please leave your thoughts and comments, uh, you know, any ideas to improve the build and so forth, because uh, this definitely is a very fun sorceress build, which um, I have also again never seen online, which is maybe doesn't come as a big surprise. So it's definitely up with the most rare builds in the game that people do. 
So yeah, thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a good one.